about time varying systems? Well, for a time varying system, an equilibrium point at the origin is stable in the sense of Lyapunov at time t equals t naught. So now, notice because we have a time varying system, we actually have to look at it in terms of its time constraints as well, not just its state constraints, not just its place in the space. If for any epsilon greater than zero, there exists a delta that involves both t naught and epsilon greater than zero, such that if x is less, if the initial value of x is within this delta ball, then x stays within this delta ball for all time. So this is stability in the sense of Lyapunov for time varying systems. Okay, so when we talked about stability in the sense of Lyapunov before, we just we were actually talking about time invariant systems. So, it, so notice that the delta here, that this that this thing must stay within, the delta here in general may be a function of t naught. If it is not a function of t naught, then the stability is is called uniform, st uniform stability. Uniform asymptotic stability. So, the equilibrium point is uniformly asymptotically stable if there's a delta such that for any epsilon one there exists a T that depends upon some capital T that depends upon epsilon time. This is actually some time such that if X starts within a delta ball, then X of T for all time will stay within, a, a, or rather X of T will stay within an epsilon ball for T greater than or equal to T naught plus some capital T. Okay. That is, after a certain point, so in other words, it may do a lot of stuff, but after a certain point, it will be within this ball. Okay, that's what this is saying. There is a time at which this occurs. So this is what's called uniform asymptotic stability. Okay, notice that we're, this does not say specifically the limit as t goes to infinity is, um, is zero. It doesn't say that. It's actually kind of implied within all of this epsilon and deltas and and all that, but it actually doesn't. So in, when we talked about uniform, uh, when we talked about asymptotically asymptotic stability before, we basically said the the limit was to zero. Here we're not actually saying the limit is, goes to zero. Now, in order to talk about stability of time varying systems, we need to talk about something called a decrescent function. Okay, so a function in this case like a Lyapunov function which is a function and in general maybe a function of X and of time okay um, so again it's it's the same kind of thing a continuous function is decrescent if for some epsilon greater than zero and some continuous strictly increasing function beta V of X of T of X and T is less than or equal to some that beta strictly increasing function um, that's a function of the norm of x for all norms of x less than or epsilon and for all time greater than or equal to zero so that's where the epsilon comes in that is I'm within some neighborhood of the origin okay I'm, so I'm in some neighbor that's what this is actually saying epsilon greater than zero I'm, I'm within some neighborhood of the origin okay for all time greater than or equal to zero so V is decrescent if I have this, it's bounded basically by this function of the norm of X for all X and T. So the concept of strictly increasing means that uh, if X1 is less than or X2, then beta of X1 is less than beta of X2. That's the basic idea. So we have this concept of a decrescent function. Okay, so it's important. An alternate view of decrescency is this. A continuous function V is decrescent if and only if the supremum of all norms less than or equal to some value P of the supremum of V of X of T and X for all T greater than or equal to zero if this quantity is finite. And for each P within some um, non-zero um, interval around the origin, near the origin. 
So again, this is a, a very math. So supremum is kind of like the maximum. That's what soup stands for. It doesn't mean that you're going to throw in some chicken and potatoes or noodles or rice, depending on your preference. It means soup means stands for supremum, which means it's like the maximum. But in, in many functions um, uh, or many cases, a maximum doesn't exist. Uh, for example, if I have an, uh, an asymptote that asymptotically goes to some value, it never actually reaches that value, but um, it, it gets very, very close to that value. So that would be the supremum. So that's the concept of the supremum. So uh, this is a definition. It's kind of complicated to work with, though. So anyway. So let's look at this uh, example of a decrescent function. Just, just to get our feet wet. There are more examples in the, uh, in the practice problems. So notice I have x transpose x e to the minus alpha t, where alpha is positive. So we see that v of 0, when x is 0, uh, and t is 0, and v of x is positive for all x non-zero and all t. So we have that. However, when we take the limit as t goes to infinity of this, we get 0 for all x, regardless of the x, and is thus, this function thus is only positive semi-definite and not positive definite. So we have that situation. That doesn't deal directly with decrescency, but it, it does deal with functions, Lyapunov type functions, that are functions of time as well. How about this function? Is it decrescent? So v1 is this expression. So we notice that this expression is greater than or equal to 0 for all x and is 0 only if x is equal to 0. Okay, so we have this condition. v of x of t is greater than or equal to v1 of t for all, for all t, for all x. The limit, however, of this expression is infinity for all x. And so for any x, the supremum is infinite, and so we see that v is not decrescent. So um, this concept of decrescency is really important in, able, in being able to establish the stability for time-varying systems.